how to get more DJ bookings. A nice thread by Post Human. This was, I think, featured on, I think, Electronic Beats. And I kind of plucked it out there. I thought there was some really good tidbits, some really good info here that I think would be uh, beneficial to everyone, really, in their own creative um, endeavors or whatever it may be. But I think um, the one that I liked the most about this was that um, he posted this in the kind of under the guise of not having an agent. I think for the most part, again, maybe it's just the old way of doing things. I think because it was it was done because getting bo- because booking people or putting on shows was done one way for so long. There was no need to really evolve or to change it. And then once the internet came in, it kind of blew everything out of the water, right? Because effectively, if you've got a camera or ability to record yourself and you have the equipment to play the music on, you could essentially read a you can essentially reach a reach a much bigger audience than you could ever reach playing in a nightclub, right? There's no nightclub you could go to that's gonna be able to accommodate a hundred thousand people, right? For the most part. You're gonna have to play in smaller venues, but you could attract you could attract the eyes and get the attention or garner the engagement that would then justifiably allow you to go to these clubs and say hey look look at the views i get and look at the views that i'm getting in your location i think i could play here i demand this sort of fee so it kind of flew blew, blew everything out of the water but part of the old guard part of the old process was that in order to kind of get to the next level like if my level is like bar pub guy to get to the next level to kind of be playing regularly in nightclubs you would need a manager or an agent because that agent will have links to the clubs who could then get you bookings because the first person they go to when they want to get a DJ to play somewhere in a nightclub is they're going to go to someone who's reputable, someone they have a relationship with, and someone that's got like a track record. So they go to the agent or the booking book agent or the booking agency or the manager or the manager company and say, hey, have you got anyone that fits this profile who can play at this date for this amount of price on this time, right? They go for their Rolodex, they call you, you get a gig. So it kind of allows DJs who are the next level up to not go around hunting for gigs because that's what I'm basically doing on my level. You're hunting for places to go play for, to go play at, or you're having to bring your own equipment to go play these places because they don't have any other, you know, they don't have like a PA system or anything called. So it's a, it's a lot of work involved in it. But obviously, when you reach that other level, what they do is that those agents, they take that work away from you. They take that workload off of you. So you effectively get to just concentrate on just doing the music, which is something that a lot of people, especially in the beginning, are very, especially once you grind it all your way through, you're very thankful for it because a lot of the, a lot of the kind of hustle when it comes to creative endeavors involves a lot of just grafting on your own, right? Just doing everything, graphic design, copywriting, marketing, uh, distribution you're just doing everything and it can get quite exhausting i know for me it has right especially working a full-time job balancing doing a podcast balancing living life balancing doing other kind of endeavors that i'm doing on the side as well it takes a lot out of you because effectively there is not a lot of time in the day to do what you want to do so you have to be very very specific directly the time that you and how you use your time so you're having to like wake up earlier to maybe buy tunes or to maybe think about a place you want to mix later you're having to think about it during your lunch break you have to then come home quickly, practice for a couple of hours, upload it onto fit, and then make a flyer, then promote it on social media, then maybe go and do some. Re- I mean, it takes up a lot of time, so you don't really have that much time in a day. So, when you get an agent, it's like, oh, thank God, right? They take that load off your hands. But there's also a side of it where it's like, if you've got the internet, why would you actually need an agent anyway? Especially if most of what they're handling is just inbound calls, right? Inbound references, inbound requests, uh, or, or like notes of interest. Yeah, they're, not, they're not necessarily going out and hunting you to get a gig at Burger because that's not what how it's done, right? Usually the Burger reaches out to you and says, hey, we think you'd be a fit, good fit for our club or maybe someone recommends you, right? Um, in that way, shape or form. But anyway, Post Human posted some friend on Twitter kind of explaining how he goes about being like doing himself, being the level DJ he's at without an agent, which is something I, I never really thought about doing at that level because I think it probably be requ- probably more more has what it's worth but he kind of broke it down really well and i wanted to kind of speak about that friend here so this is a friend from post human on twitter post a few a couple of months ago um in says the following here uh, i get a lot of private messages from other djs some established and some not asking about how i can get how i get a gig booking how i get gig bookings without an agent it requires hustle and graph but there's a few simple tips i i can give one get a list of give a dj similar to yourself in profile and style, look for DJs who can play, who play music out regularly, who check out where they are, residents for all regulars. Check their, through their Facebook and RA pages and find all the places they have played over the last few years, which is really good. I think that's a good way to kind of, in general, to place yourself when it comes to any kind of pursuit. It's to kind of look at the market, um, obviously rationally, obviously with a clear mind, don't be delusional of your skill set or your level, and just kind of see the people who are kind of behind you, in front of you, and see what they're doing, um, what moves are they making, where are they playing at. 
uh, where are they doing the exhibitions at? Who are they represented by? And then maybe try and make moves that kind of going to position you in that place. Because one thing about when you're starting is that you can kind of feel like you should do everything and anything under the sun to get noticed. But once you get going, you start to realize, no, no, you should be very specific of how you do your thing because it only takes a couple of inconsiderate, inconsiderate moves here and there to kind of pigeon you in one area. You don't want to be pigeonholed at all when you're an artist. You want to kind of be as nimble. You kind of want to self-define yourself, self-pigeonhole yourself. You don't want the industry to tell you you are this person and if you have to live up to that or like, you know I mean, that's the worst nightmare. Have the industry tell you you're one thing, then you want to fight against it. All your fans come out thinking you're that one thing the media says. They come to a show and you're not that thing and you're like, what the fuck is this? I didn't sign up for that stuff. You know what I mean? That's not what you want. Um, number two here. Uh, engage with those artists, club nights and labels, like, comment and share their posts, check their tunes, mixes and radio shows, play them out and chart them. Get involved, give out, give out support, spread the word. Number three, keep an eye out on those club nights and venues. If it looks like they're doing steady bookings instead of one-offs, drop them a message, be honest and frank. I saw you booked, da, da, da. how did it go? I'd love to play with you sometime if you're looking for future booking, which is awesome. I think just being upfront and going directly to them. Again, doing the whole scattergun approach with bookings doesn't work. I'm sure it's a small world. People probably talk to each other privately and say hey is this guy annoying you too about getting booking so don't do that go to places that actually fit your musical style that's probably a good way to do go things so that there is some sort of synergy there um of course it's harder of course and this is going to be shorter but it's going to be a better way to you to go about things um be realistic on fees if you're chasing them so you have little less to clout you know so you have a little less clout small venues and new promoters are often struggling but don't sell yourself too short either it's fine to balance knowing your worth but also uh not putting people off which is very true I think anyone that comes into this, I think anyway, the idea of making money straight away, this kind of thing is a bit weird, I think anyway. You should probably come into any kind of creative or entertainment pursuit with the idea that you're not going to make a lot of money, but you'd rather not make a lot of money doing the thing that you love than make a lot of money doing something you don't love, right? That is essentially what it is. I, I don't think, unless you're maybe going on X Factor or American Idol, I don't think anyone gets into any kind of entertainment industry wanting to be famous and to be a star and to kind of you know sell out world tours you just want to do the thing that you love to do in your bedroom and have people pay for it have people like support your lifestyle with it that's all you really wanted when you first get in of course once you get in you can have really big goals right i want to be the first billionaire i want to have this show i want to tour here i want to you got some really concrete goals lofty ones but i think what the actual need of getting into a creative pursuit is like you want to distract yourself from the tyranny of your everyday life right you want to uh know that you've got a, a reason to live outside of just you know being a marketing assistant somewhere for a firm or for being a receptionist or whatever right? you want to know there's something more to yourself so you go and do these other things outside of it to kind of give you a reason to live or to kind of give you a reason to to do the other nine to five notes that you're doing that's it um so i think the idea of getting into it with the idea of making money is weird so if you are hitting up promoters to kind of book you for an event to kind of go demanding a certain fee is weird. You, if I was you, even the fact that you're getting a response is a big thing because I'm sure they get inundated with working requests. So if you are getting a response, just take what they give you or even sometimes play for free just for the... Because I think, think about the amount of people that must hit up promoters to come play at their club nights. And then think about the people, think about the amount that hit them up, the amount that do come and play and the amount that are actually good. There's probably not a lot of correlation between people that chase you for things who actually can deliver on the job Right, I'm assuming for the most part, which is why people are really hesitant about giving randoms a chance because for the most part you get burned. Uh, so if you are good and you really back your talent, maybe just saying, "Look, book me for free. I'll play for free. I'll play for. I'll play for a guest list. Right? <laughs> I'll play for a couple of free drinks. Um, and then and then if I do good, you want to book me for the next event, right? Especially if you're a pleasure to deal with. You come on time. You sell it at the venue. You just you know you interact with people. You just call." They want to book you again because you're a good time, right? You're a good hang. Um, so maybe back yourself that way. But to demand a fee, especially if you're changing someone, is very, very bizarre. And again, to demand any kind of money out of this love that you have, a hobby, is weird too because it kind of takes the fun out of it, right? And then the money's going to come, right? If you're good and you're doing it long enough, you're going to get paid. It's just it's just about doing it long enough, right? That's that's the hardest thing about it because it takes out it takes a lot out of you. Uh Number five, make an invoice template. Get your eye band and big and paper on there. Without an agent, you may end up chasing money a fair bit, which is true, which is the only thing I think a lot of creators don't like doing because that's, that's the side of creativity that kind of hinders most creators is the fact that you don't really want to get involved in the business. 
and the business is so important nowadays it's kind of all encompassing really it's about the art it's about the business too but most people don't want to do the business so that's why the agents come in and demand their 10 percent because they're having to do all this sort of like dog's work quote unquote right chasing money getting your fees settled up doing the terms all that sort of stuff can be a bit hard to navigate but you know uh, never pay to play unless you have 1000 percent trust and know the promoter personally and the pay for play thing is dodgy i think the, the, it's like similar to like the promote to play right sharing the event on your facebook and marketing it all out and stuff is nonsense obviously you should support the place that you're playing in and letting your fans know that you're going to play there but overly selling it at night isn't really your job it's the promoter's job who kind of hide you to kind of get um uh, who kind of hide you on the night anyway to sell more tickets they should be the ones pushing it but there are some promoters, and especially when you start off, that kind of try and get you and trick you. I've been tricked a couple of times. You have you have to get tricked anyway. You you've got to get scammed. You've got to get fucked in the ass a couple of times for you to know what's out there. And I've definitely got scammed by those promoters, you know, those Soho clubs where you get to play in a place that's supposed to be really packed of table service people, but then you have to kind of promote and like. You have to promote and share this gaudy fucking. I, I don't know. Soho clubs have some of the worst fly designs in the world all shiny and gold and sparkles and shit uh pictures of really affluent attractive people standing around looking all nice and you get there and it's not those people at all um yeah i don't know i don't know number six uh travel costs are generally main uh travel costs generally main train station airport to the destination to the venue and it's not usually assumed to cover your local travel or train station there are some promoters take you out for a meal if not ask for a cash buyout which is true don't be greedy i agree with that um Obviously, if you're traveling abroad, it might be a bit of an issue. But if you're traveling in inland, I wouldn't even want to get the travel costs. I just want my fee and bounce in it because, you know, I don't know. I want to be a less half to do as possible. And number seven, don't have an agent. If it, it can be handy to offer a landed fee where a, or where the cost is all in and you cover your own travel, which I would agree with. Never book until they have at least paid the travel cost in advance. True. So obviously, try and get 50% up in front and then the rest when you complete the actual date so that, you, so, so that the promoter can kind of cover their asses too in case you decide to pour... I don't know some sort of fan for Lugo plan here. Seven. If you don't have an agent, it can okay. No, it's eight. If um, without an agent, it can be messy getting uh, itineraries, and you'll likely have to to self manage. Uh, make sure you have a charge phone, local taxi apps and details, and research your destinations in case you get left hand. But that, that's common sense. So if you go on a holiday somewhere. You have those places involved. You have like a place to go get breakfast, lunch, dinner. Uh, you have a place to go get some, I don't know, some cosmetic stuff or some, you know, a chemist, whatever that be called, local place. You'll find out the local, you find a place where you can go to that is really expensive and really cheap. So by the end of the holiday, when you got the money, you can go somewhere to get a meal. These things you do when you go on holiday, right? I don't think there's a lot of people that go to holiday and just go there on, the, on a whim with no idea, no Googling at all. You're going to do some Googling. So the same thing when you get booked. Obviously, that's common sense. Nine, get mobile phone numbers for promoters and their crew which is very important too. Send a little thank you text at the end. 10, be careful of we have a room at someone's house instead of hotels. Ask for a photo, which is definitely true. <laughs> I still get caught out with this stuff. Stayed in a room full of mold a little while back. Grim. With hotels, ask for late checkouts. It's worth paying extra. Yeah, I agree with that one. So because imagine if you're playing nightclub somewhere, you get back to your home at hotel room at seven, but then you've got to check out it by 12, right? That's annoying. Um, Especially because most, most of the time you don't intend to stay out with the promoters, but you know you had a good night. You want to show them you're thankful. You don't want to be a dick and just run away. So you want to stay around, but then you end up you know uh, hurting yourself by not getting a good night's amount of sleep. So paying the extra just to kind of allow you to check out free or something is probably well welcome, especially if your flight's going to be at six p.m. Uh, the next day. Uh, once you do number eleven, once you do get a booking, don't just stick sit back and expect them to do all the work and make an effort to help promote the party. To promote the party, be that sharing the social media or doing the mixes with definitely true sometimes the promoters will ask for advertiser access to your social media this can help too all right uh, check the town and city you are playing in if there's any local radio shows offer to come on as a guest tap up any local newspapers and magazines or blogs engage social media with other people in that town city get involved i definitely agree with that one i think that's but again you don't see much i think these are all the things that agents are meant to do but i don't think they are doing maybe in some respects because you don't see a lot of djs doing themselves maybe they don't want to do it uh but this is something that i would assume if you're on your especially if you want to create an actual especially if you want to cultivate a fan base that you don't actually actually have that might be a good way to go about it, right? Um, playing at some local bar somewhere or sending a mix or doing a little call-in interview. That would be pretty cool, I think. Especially if in a, in a, foreign, a country that's foreign to your own. Um, people get to know you as a person and want to maybe engage with you. Again, whether or not those people are going to come to your club is another thing, but, you know, it's not... It's, it's not what, what's the worst that can happen? Um, most importantly, when you do do the gig, don't be a cunt, even if the place is empty or sound is whack or the crowd sucks. Play your best and be professional. Don't judge. That's what I definitely do. Um, I've been doing that more often than not, especially the pub, bar, bar, pub, bar pub gigs I play in. 
it can be a little bit disconcerting to look out to a crowd and see just people just you know, not one well, giving a shit of what you're doing. But I tend to approach it the same way I approach playing in the pack nightclub. I try and bring it. I'm giving them energy. I'm performing. I'm dancing. Right. I'm having a good time. I'm enjoying myself at least anyway. Um, so that those kind of same habits I'll then carry over when I go to play like a big venue somewhere someday. Right. Um, you want to start off doing the right things in the beginning so that when it gets to the future, you carry on a habit because to suspect to expect yourself to somehow turn on and become DJ man when you get to play print works is rare. You have to kind of cultivate that personality, that approach to performing um, when you're doing a DJ set playing in a, in a pub with 10 people in it. Um, and that will carry over to the bigger venues. Again, if that's not your thing, it's not your vibe, then it's what it is, but there has to be some level of understanding that you have to kind of partake and get involved in that way. Um, blah, blah, blah. Number 14, don't be scared of asking, but don't always expect a reply. You might get ignored. You might get a negative response. I don't tell... Don't, I couldn't tell you how many... Um, where Who are you replies I've had. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, that's true as well. But again, expecting anything... I think this kind of goes back to the whole entitlement um, of kind of expecting to get paid. I think expecting to get paid, expecting to get a reply from a promoter is insane. Just like I said, there's not enough clubs for DJs. There's not enough promoters for DJs. There's not enough agents for DJs. So um, it's a very um, overpopulated space. It's somewhere low barrier of entry, especially with controllers. Anyone can kind of start get started at the beginning. So you have to kind of expect people to kind of be a little bit, eh, you know, I'll pass in the beginning, right? But once you start, well, but once you start your your clout starts getting up, you start to get a little bit more exposure, a little bit more, it's a little bit more notoriety. It's obviously in their best interest to keep you in mind or to kind of want you to be involved because you can now help their bottom line. Uh, but again, there's going to be a million people hitting them up, right? Don't expect, you know, don't be too up your ass and thinking that, you know, they have to see my message. Anyway, number 15, to end it here, you might have to do some serious digging to get contact details, rabbit holes on Facebook page or RA page to Instagram to Twitter before stumbling upon an email address. There are rewards at the end of the internet sleuthing, but you'll have to put in the hours in. Anyway, it says, I hope this will help with somebody out there. He says, oh, PS travel tips, USB power block, universal power adapter, backup USB sticks, rehydration tablets, earplugs, wet wipes, painkillers, equals, should never leave a DJ bag. Okay, that's really cool. All those things are really cool in the bag. Also, especially if you travel often, buy a budget airline, Okay, backpacks over roller cases. You'll never, you'll never, you, they'll never ask you to put it in the hold on a busy flight, so you won't have to piss about standing in the gate queue to get them off the plane first. Get that one that fits wax. This helps with the loop. Whatever. Okay, that's interesting, right? Backpacks over roller cases. I would, say, I guess, if you're going on a short trip and you're just going to DJ, it'll make more sense, right? Roller case can be a bit annoying, right? Dragging it along as well, having to put it into the hold. Yeah, I can agree with that. But I just say maybe your back's gonna get brutalized, isn't it? You're standing up for six hours playing, then you've got, you've got vinyl hanging up your back. Obviously, if you're not playing vinyl, it's perfect because you've only got that bag you said, right, of stuff and your clothes. So it might not be too much, right? Uh, other one, a couple of years I've asked about fees. Here's a good rule of thumb: twenty capacity venue, ten pound entry, safe target is half four is one ten one thousand income. Promoter has to hire the venue, pay the promoter, pay for the promotion, so they probably have around six hundred left for the DJ fees and cost. Headliner will expect to get four hundred pound all in. It's obviously very easy. but yeah, it's a really good added amendment. Agree a set fee. Never if you do well we'll pay you more. Of course I agree with that. Ask for a full fee regardless of how the party went. And if they do well on the night, don't ask for more. That's the promoter's risk and reward gamble. You're just working for a set rate. Be professional. Hundred percent agree. And obviously the other thing as well, I'd say don't drink during your DJ set. I think that's a really big one. I think for the most part, I think you get into it, you can kind of rely on the drink to kind of let you to be comfortable so you're not nervous and shit. But once you start to get, become professional, start to get a bit better, you start to realize that actually the drink kind of it, um, blocks your receptors and being creative. You tend to kind of play worse. I think the times that I've played the worst, the times that I've kind of drunk the most, sometimes I've not drunk the, I've drunk the least, the times I've played the best, but I've also been very cognitive of my environment. I think that's something you have to kind of give up. When you drink, you kind of disconnect from the environment. It's the same when you do drugs, isn't it? It kind of stops your receptors from kind of noticing awkwardness. Um, yeah. But yeah, I think the, those are good tips from Post Human. Definitely check it out. It's available now on his Twitter. I'll, I'll link to a thread you can check out yourself. But yeah, it's a really good thread. Very, very well 